The fourth pillar of food safety is temperature control, which is critical in ensuring the prevention of bacterial growth and maintaining overall quality of foods. Temperature control ensures that foods that are meant to be served hot are kept at the required temperatures and foods meant to be served cold are not left out at dangerous temperatures. One of the best ways to kill bacteria is by heat. Rapid changes in temperature also prevent bacteria from surviving, so heating foods quickly kills bacteria. Cold temperatures actually only slow or minimize the growth of bacteria. Think about foods in your fridge. When they're kept in the fridge for longer than three days, foods start to go off. This is caused by food spoilage bacteria and takes a few days to happen in the fridge, especially due to the minimum growth rate. However, when you leave foods at, out at 20 plus degrees Celsius, foods <clears throat> spoil a lot quicker. This is what we talk about in terms of the danger zone. The danger zone is a temperature range in which bacteria grow and rapidly multiply at its fastest. The temperature range is usually between 20 to 45 degrees Celsius. This is because our internal body temperature runs at 37 degrees Celsius and the food poisoning bacteria are related to us by the food that we eat. So 37 degrees Celsius is therefore the optimum performance zone for bacteria. This is true for bacteria such as E. coli and Salmonella. Therefore keeping foods outside this range prevents rapid growth of bacteria. So let's take a look at how we manage our hot foods. All hot foods, but especially those on a display at a buffet or servery, must be kept above 65 degrees Celsius at all times. In order to achieve this, hot foods must be kept in a preheated hot display that is above this temperature. If you place hot foods in a cool display, it will take too long to get back up to temperature, allowing bacteria to survive. The same is true for placing cool foods into a hot display. Remember, we need quick and high temperatures to be able to kill bacteria. Keeping records for both the hot and the cold display of foods is an important factor in temperature control. Remember that if it's not being monitored, then it's not being managed. Temperatures should be recorded at least one hour into service in order to be able to pick up if any uh, concerns are happening and everything is in order. When it comes to reheating of foods, they should be heated to a core temperature of at least 70 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes in order to ensure that all bacteria have been killed. Please note that warmers and bain-maries cannot be used to reheat foods because they do not rapidly increase the temperature, allowing time for bacteria to grow and survive. So with cold foods, similar principles apply. This is the case for high-risk cold foods such as prepared salads, cold meats and dairy items. These need to be displayed below 5 degrees Celsius. Foods such as fruits and vegetables can be displayed below 7 degrees Celsius. However, this requires the cold display to be kept cold and out of the danger zone. Cold displays must either be refrigerated or kept on ice. We would recommend both in warmer climates. Crushed ice seems to work well, especially as a display, as it is both appealing and functional. So let's take a look at the refrigeration of foods. Much like the display of foods, all perishable foods need to be refrigerated. This is so that the foods do not spoil sooner than the expiry date. Remember that cold temperatures only minimize bacterial growth, but in some cases bacteria such as Listeria actually thrive at refrigerated temperatures. This is why all five food safety pillars are absolutely essential. Nevertheless, high-risk foods need to be kept below 5 degrees Celsius. Fruits and vegetables should be kept below 7 degrees Celsius, as is the case when displayed. Frozen foods need to be kept at minus 12 degrees Celsius. However, colder temperatures up to minus 20 degrees Celsius will allow you to keep your foods for at least 12 months. Ice cream, however, is particularly unique due to its consistency and must be kept below minus 18 degrees Celsius. This keeps the ice cream solid, preventing crystallization and therefore layers in which bacteria can survive. Maintaining refrigeration units is vital to ensuring safety and quality and should also be monitored on a daily basis to ensure correct temperatures are kept. Keeping records will also allow you to detect ongoing maintenance concerns or whether the doors have been left out for too long due to negligence. So let's take a look at what a temperature record checklist should look like. The checklist must be provided with the date, a column for the temperature being recorded daily, and notice that the temperature limits are also included. Also include a column for corrective action, and remember that each of the checklists must always be signed off.